Welcome back, Love Nation. This is Nina. Like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for coming to my channel. We're going to get straight into this. Um, this is a picture of Cola Booth, and I think that she is definitely going to be playing a key role in the Diddy investigation as she is purporting to say that she has information that Kim Porter shared with her during her time with, with Diddy while she was writing the book about her life concerning some key gossip about Diddy before, you know, she was found um, deleted. I am going to read through this post that she put online. Again, I think that she would be playing a key role in this Diddy investigation. And I'm just going to be reading what she put online because I think this will be significant in the next coming months. Like, share, subscribe, you guys. And here we go. So oh, this is the social media um, conversation I wanted to share with you guys in case this get deleted. This is concerning a um, friend. I'm just going to say alleged friend because I cannot verify all of this information. Um, she goes by the name of writer Cola Booth. And I am going to um, read you guys the comments that she made on her social media I will have to self-edit because of YouTube's guidelines, so please just read along with me. And again, I'm going to have to edit some of the language as I read this um, conversation that she put on social media that is going viral. So, she posted, my attorneys are engaged in very serious talks today due to comments I made yesterday about Kim Porter, Diddy, and Cassie. I will be making a formal statement in the next 10 minutes. I hope this brings clarity as I go forward in speaking up about my deceased friend, Kim Porter. Now, again, this was posted this weekend, as you guys can see. Millions of views. Let's just get into this. This is what she put. Clarity on Kim Porter, number one. When I met Kim Porter at Hollywood charity event, she came over to me because several people were saying that tall girl was a uh, read that mistress. Kim remembered seeing me interviewed on MSNBC years earlier. She asked me if it was true. I told her yes. We and several other women, and I guess she wanted to specify that, in case other women will come out later to verify this, ended up chatting for most of the event. Kim and I had been fashion models. We talked a lot about that. Later, Kim and two other sisters said they were going to Mr. Child's for dinner. They invited me. We went in different cars, not together. We ended up going to a different restaurant, an Ethiopian restaurant on Highland and Olympic. We had food, drinks, and lots of laughs together. Kim Porter and I exchanged numbers because she wanted to audition for a part on a TV show at Sony and knew that I had dated the producer of the show. I offered to talk to him on Kim's behalf. We exchanged numbers. She continues. Point two. Over the next two years, I had several phone conversations with Kim Porter. The first conversation was about her audition for my ex's show at Sony, not being a fit. Kim was going to be a fam famous comedian's house for lunch and invited me. I told her that I detested this particular black comic because of the very cruel remarks he made about me during the fill-in-the-blank scandal in 2003. Kim Porter and Andre Leon Talley were two of the very few black American people that were sympathetic to the deep trauma I had experienced after being taken in Morocco by fill in the blank men. I was blanked by Somi the first night. I was held against my will at the La Maison Avib 
Arabi, excuse me if I did not pronounce that correctly, for six months. I experienced, you guys can fill in a blanket there, at Somi's instruction. I had been in therapy for years behind modeling in Morocco. Point three. Kim Porter and Andre Leon Talley were sympathetic to what happened to me. I could cry to them. Americans generally made fun of my situation and blank in Morocco. Many so-called blanks experts feared losing their careers for not knowing about me. So they went on the attack and called me a liar. Blank's family spent money trying to discredit me. Black woman writer Disha Fayal, excuse me if I did not pronounce that correctly, viciously accused me of being a fraud and made incredibly hurtful in comments to me that made me feel like self-deletion. Everyone joked about my name, Boof, being weird. A Boof is a Nylock war drum. The comedian that Kim wanted to have lunch with, with me uh, to tag along with, was part of those who twisted my story. Why would you date a blank? As if we had been dating in the Arab world. As if women had rights, especially a black woman. When CNN, Fox News, and New York Post began calling me blankety blanks, blank, you guys can read that. I have to self-edit for YouTube. You would think that black Americans would remember Sally Hemings and have compassion for my suffering. But no. And to them, I guess it was funny. Clarity 4. In our first few telephone chats, Kim Porter told me to let it out. We talked nonstop about every facet of what I went through at Le Maison Arib with Blankety Blank and others. I had deleted a man, one of his bodyguards said, who was very racist and despised that his boss was having relations with me and put me in charge of his compound. The guard, I believe, was going to delete me. It happened at a party. There was a dozen witnesses, and I ended up deleting him. I did one day in jail. Somi got me out and took me back to La Maison Arib. Kim Porter was fascinated by my story. And we mostly talked about me at first. I told her that Andre, Leon, Talley, and Whitney Houston were the only people who cared about my trauma. Media was cruel to me. Clarity 5. Kim Porter was such a kind person. She was like having a sister. She and Nippy, Whitney Houston, had allowed me to vent in our phone conversations about my chronic night nightmares and my therapy sessions. Whitney always called me, you guys can fill in the blank, and I found that hilarious and stress relieving. Kim Porter began to tell me things about her relationship with Diddy. She wanted me to understand that she totally related being kept uh, harmed. You guys can look at that or racially demeaned as I had been by the Arab men over my hair texture and mahogany skin tone. We did not talk every day or every week. Maybe every three weeks we caught up with each other. Sometimes it was just brief. Hey girl, I'm flying to Miami. Got lots to tell you about so-and-so. Talk later. Other times we were on the phone for hours. But during these phone calls, Kim Porter told me about her deep love for Diddy how she wanted to make it work with a black man for our community's public image and her desire to make it bigger or something, model, actress, whatever she could get. Clarity 6. Kemp told me that she wanted to write a book about her life, but she feared writing anything about Diddy. She had spoken to an editor or two in New York City, and they were making it clear 
Publishers can't buy a book from you if you're not going to give us the goods, the dirt. We want the dirt. This put horrible pressure on Kim Porter. I was already a successful television writer under contract to Sony and NBC at the time. I Ghost Head wrote the soap opera Days of Our Lives and was then moved to Young and the Restless after the blankety blank scandal broke and sponsors began demanding that I be fired. So much was going on, it was terrible, but, for, but Kim was such a sister to me, she was on my side. Clarity 9. Kim invited me to her house in Toluca Lake, but I am known for being lazy and not liking to leave my own ranch. They jokingly call me the African Garbo, because I don't like attention the way people think I do. So I never did come to Kim's house. Over the next few months, Kim Porter began writing her life story. She told me about it. Just, I shared with her the details of my experience with blankety blank and blankety blank, the vice president of Sudan, who was my sugar daddy who had also mentored Somi and Tarabi's son, Assam, Somi's best friend and business partner, who was also in love with me. Just as I told Kim all about this, she told me all about her experiences with Diddy, and it was a horrid abuse. Clarity 8. Kim was excited about the book she was writing. She told me she was afraid for Diddy to read it, and then a few weeks later, I saw in the news that she had passed away. I wrote articles attacking Diddy. For instance, there was one I did about him, putting out a call for models for his new champagne, and he specified no dark-skinned women, light-skinned, or biracial only in the call sheet. I wrote about that and other things, but I did not expose Kim's secrets, the things she told me in confidence, because frankly, everyone, even black Americans, were already calling me a liar. They despised me for being Sudanese despised me for speaking my mind earlier on colorism and one drop rule. So who was going to believe me if I had spilled Kim's secrets? And Disha Filia said to me, you're just a fraud and a liar. Your birth parents were deleted in front of you when you were six. I was too afraid to completely speak up in my attacks on Diddy. Yesterday, I watched a video of Diddy putting his hands on poor Cassie, dragging that poor girl like she was a rag doll until she had carpet burns. It enraged me so much that I honestly felt like I heard Kemp Porter whisper in my ear, Now, Cola, now it's okay. Do it now. Kemp Porter was deleted. She did not deserve what happened to her, and I am not the one that you can intimidate and make me back down from a fight. I am an African mother of two sons. I am a good daughter of my wonderful adoptive black American mother. And I am Naima Bent Harith as Koala Bear. Koala Booth, I'm sorry. Koala Booth. I am severely damaged and traumatized and battled and misunderstood. And I am the most truthful woman that has ever set foot on American soul. F what you heard. Cola Booth is the truth. Again, this is what she put on her social media. Just to clarify who this woman is, she said that she was friends with Kim Porter. And while I am not saying that she was not, I have not been able to verify this information just yet. But it seems like she is going to put out more information uh, concerning uh, the situation. Uh, if anything else pops up, I will let you guys know. Until next time, you guys, like, share, subscribe. Be safe. Bye, guys.